Church family, we want to welcome you today. We're honored you take time out of your weekend to come and to hang out with us. Uh, we have just wrapped up last week a series called The Busy Marriage, and uh, it was all about uh, finding uh, room for the most important relationships in our life in a season of busyness. And today, we're going to move from talking about marriage uh, to talking about food. So let's just take a poll, all right? Uh, how many of you are sweets people, like candy, ice cream, cake? Cookies, that's your thing, all right? And by show of hands, some of you. How many of you are salty people? And I don't mean personality. I mean like chips and pretzels and that, that's your thing, salty people. How many of you are protein people like beefs? You give me the steak, give me the burgers, give me the chicken. How many of you are all three so far? Like you're all three, all right, my kind of people. Um, how many of you are bread people? You just love bread, like baked good items. You're my people, man. You are my people. I love bread. I love carbs. The thought of a low-carb diet, I'd rather cut my right arm off uh, than go on a low-carb diet. I love like bread and anything from the bakery. Like if I go to a town when we're traveling and training church planters and they're like, oh, let us take you to this little mom and pop bakery. You might as well, I mean, you just say, let me take you to heaven because that's where I, I just love it. I love bakery items. I love bread. When we go to San Antonio, I don't care what we're there for. We will go to Tierra and buy an enormous amount of items uh, from their bakery. And most of it will go bad before I can eat it. I don't know why I do it every time. I just love bread. Well, you may know this or you may not know this, but the Bible actually Actually talks about bread. Uh, Jesus himself actually talks about bread. He makes a very important reference uh, to the, the, the carbohydrate, to uh, bread. And we're going to dive in God's Word and look at that today. So if you have a Bible, open your Bible up or go on your Bible app to John chapter 6. Uh, if you don't have a Bible, you don't have the app on your phone, no need to panic. You can follow along on the screen behind me. All the verses we use will be on the screen today. If you're new to church or new to the Bible, the Bible's divided up into two sections, the Old Testament and the New Testament. The Old Testament is a record of the history and movement of God uh, before the coming of His Son Jesus into the world. And everything in the Old Testament points forward that one day God will send a rescuer to rescue people from their sins. Uh, the New Testament is the story of the rescuer. His name is Jesus. He's the Messiah, the Son of God. And the New Testament records His birth, His life, His death on a cross, the resurrection, which is a Bible word for he came back to life after he died, and the beginnings of his early church. And so we're primarily going to be in John chapter 6 today, um, and we're going to start in verse 25. Uh, here's what the Bible says. It says, they found him on the other side. Who's they? A giant crowd of people. A giant crowd of people found Jesus on the other side of the lake and asked, Rabbi, when did you get here? And Jesus replied, I tell you the truth, you want to be with me because I fed you not because you understand the miraculous signs. So what had happened just in a few verses before this is Jesus had done a miracle and he had taken five pieces of bread and two fish and he had fed thousands and thousands of people. And he says, listen, you're only looking for me the next day because I fed you, not because I, I did the miracles, not because you understand these miracles that I'm doing is revealing that I am God in the flesh. You want to be here because I fed you dinner. He says in verse 27, but don't be so concerned about perishable things like food. Spend your energy seeking the eternal life that the Son of Man can give you. For God the Father has given me the seal of His approval. And they replied, we want to perform God's works too. What should we do? And Jesus told them, this is the only work God wants from you. Believe in the one He sent. And they answered, show us a miraculous sign if you want us to believe in you. What can you do? After all, our ancestors ate manna while they journeyed through the wilderness. The Scriptures say Moses gave them bread from heaven to eat. They, they referenced their ancestors and they said, you know, when, when Moses was our leader, bread came from heaven. And Jesus is quick to respond. He says, I tell you the truth, Moses didn't give you the bread from heaven. My father did. And now he offers you the true bread. From heaven. The true bread of God is the one who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Sir, they said, give us that bread every day. And Jesus replied, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry again. 
And so Jesus has performed this miracle and he's, he's fed these people and now he's using this miracle to teach them where true satisfaction, where, 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 where true fulfillment is found. And he says this statement, he says, I'm the bread of life. I'm the one who will give you ultimate satisfaction. I'm the place that you find ultimate fulfillment. And here's what Jesus is saying, that there's a hunger that only he satisfies. In fact, that's our big idea today, the idea we want to wrap our mind around as we spend time in God's Word, that there's a hunger deep within you and I that only Jesus satisfies. And so we're just going to spend some time today asking two questions, two questions when it comes to Jesus being the bread of life, two questions with this concept of of, of there being a hunger that only Jesus can satisfy. And here's the first one, it's this, are you hungry? Are you hungry? That's question number one. There's a hunger that only Jesus can satisfy. Here's the first question. Are you hungry? You see, what had just happened in in the first 15 verses of John chapter 6 is Jesus had just performed a performed a miracle. He was doing all these miracles in this region near the Sea of Galilee. And as he continued to do miracles, the crowd got bigger and bigger and bigger. If you can imagine, somebody comes to town, starts doing miracles, healing people, uh, healing sick people, doing all these miraculous things. They're going to attract a crowd. As Jesus attracted a crowd, he withdrew up this hillside to the Sea of Galilee. Well, guess what? Thousands of people followed him. The Bible says 5,000 people followed him, and they were just counting the men. So we don't know how many women and children. Thousands of people on this hillside. And then the disciples are like, hey, Jesus, it's time to eat. And these people are hungry. And even if we had all the money in the world, we, you know, we couldn't buy, if we had a month's wages, we couldn't buy all these people food. So what are we going to do? And then this young disciple who's probably like the junior high kid in the group, he doesn't know anything any better. He just has faith in Jesus, right? Uh, he goes, hey, this guy has a couple tuna fish sandwiches. And Jesus said, bring it to me. And Jesus blesses five pieces of bread and two fish, and it multiplies, and he feeds thousands of people. And the Bible said that they ate until they were full. They ate and got their fill. And guess what happens the next day? In verse 25, that's where we started. It says they found him on the other side of the lake and said, hey, Rabbi, when would you get here? It's almost like they said, hey, Jesus, how would you sneak off in the night? We're hungry again. Hey, Rabbi, how, how did you... Get here. And Jesus replied, I, I told you, I tell you the truth. You don't want to be with me because I fed you, because, because I fed you, not because you understood the miraculous signs. But don't be so concerned about perishable things like food. Spend your energy seeking the eternal life that the Son of Man can give you. Now, let me ask you a question. Why would people that just ate until they couldn't eat anymore come looking for Jesus the next morning? It's pretty simple, right? They were hungry again. They were hungry again. It's not like you went out to dinner last night and you're like, no, that'll do me for a week. You know, you didn't, you didn't go have a burger at Grumps and go, you know what, I think I'm good for the month of March. They were hungry again. That's the thing about eating. We eat and we're full for a while, but then we're left hungry again. We have a group of students, you'll get to see them at the end of the service, uh, who are leaving on Thursday night, Friday morning at 2 a.m. Uh, we're going to Vietnam. We'll be in Vietnam for 10 days serving at our adopted school there. And uh, anytime we go to Vietnam, I can guarantee you what's going to happen about four, day four or five on that trip. Somebody's going to go, man, I would kill for a Whataburger right now. That's what they're going to do. They're going to go, I, I, I would kill for a Whataburger right now. Because you're eating food, but it's different food, and you have these cravings for things that your body says, if I had that, that would fill me up. That would satisfy me. We had a, one of our worship pastors, our former worship pastors, when he was a college student, went to Vietnam with us. And uh, we, were, we were halfway through the trip, and he, he and I were sharing a room, and he looked at me, and he just goes, man, when I get back to the United States, I'm going straight to McDonald's and Whataburger, and I'm getting 20 chicken nuggets and a triple meat Whataburger, um, right? But he had been eating the whole trip. You're eating, but you're not full. We, 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 we had been eating, but the food left us hungry for something more. And that's what's happened with the people in this story. They ate, but they're hungry for something more. And even Jesus identifies that. He said, listen, you're not looking for me because I'm the Messiah. You're not looking at, for me because you saw these miraculous things things that that I did and said, surely that must be God in the flesh. Surely that's God living among us. He said, no, you're just here because I fed you dinner last night. They were hungry for something more. They were looking for something more. And and Jesus says, "You're, you're just out here looking for more food and I can feed you food again. But guess what? You're going to be hungry again because you're physically just eating the things of this world. And so many of us, if we're not careful, we can be in the same boat that the crowd was in. 
where we feast on the things of the world. We try everything the world has to offer us, but we realize that we're empty on the inside, hungry for more. If we're not careful, it's easy to fall into that lifestyle to think, man, if I just had the right relationship, if I could just find the right friends, or if I could just find Mr. Right or Mrs. Right, then, then I would have fulfillment in life. I would have meaning in life. I would have purpose in life. If I could just find the right friends, or just find the right person, and then we find the right friends, and we find the right person, and we realize we still feel empty on the inside because we're hungry for more. Or we think, well, if I could just, if I could just get the right stuff. If I could just get the right stuff. Like if I just had that house with that pool. If I just had the truck that the neighbor drives, if I just if if I just had a if we just had a vacation home at the lake, if if we could just buy our kids these kind of things, if we got that, then we'd be satisfied in life, then we'd be fulfilled in life, and we get all of those things, and then we realize we're empty on the inside, hungry for more. And we, we do the same thing with things that are bad for us. And, and we think, well, I'm going to find my life in this. And the world has, ha, has left me with all this emptiness. So I'm going, to find my, I'm going to find my life in a high. I'm going to find my life in drugs. I'm going to find my life in alcohol. I'm going to end up with an addiction. And we, we, we get addicted to things. And then we realize that these things that are now we thought would bring us joy and we thought would bring us life are actually ushering in death and misery into our life. And we're empty on the inside, hungry for more. We do the same thing with accomplishments. If I could just get that job, or if I could just get that degree, or if I just got that position in the company, then I would arrive. Then my life would have meaning. Then my life would have value. Then I'd have purpose. And then we get the position. We, get, we achieve the accomplishment. We, 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 get, we get the dream job. And we realize we're empty on the inside, hungry for more. Because when we chase after the things of the world, and we try to fill our lives with the things of the world, it will always leave us hungry. Can I tell you why? It's because the things created in this world, the things of the created world, were never meant to satisfy our souls. Only Jesus can do that. The things in this world can't satisfy the deep hunger that's in our life for meaning and purpose and hope and life. Only Jesus can do that. Only Jesus can do that. And we're not going to find deep, lasting, true satisfaction in the things of this world. They'll always leave us empty, hungry for more. So my first question to you today is this. Are you hungry? Are you at a point in your life where you realize that everything the world offers will never truly satisfy your soul? Are you hungry for something more? Here's the second question I want to ask you then. Number two, do you want to be full? It's not just about being hungry for more, but do you want to be full? Do you want to be full? In John chapter 6, verse 35, we read it earlier. Jesus said, I'm the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry again. Jesus says, I'm the bread of life, and if you'll come and follow me, fulfillment is possible. I'm the bread of life. If you'll come and follow me, then satisfaction is possible. I'm the bread of life. If you'll come and follow me, purpose and meaning is possible. I'm the bread of life. If you'll come and follow me, hope and life is possible. He says, I'm the bread of life. If you'll come and follow me, you'll never be hungry again. You see, our hunger deep within our souls can only be filled by the bread of life. It can only be filled by the bread of life. Jesus, here's what Jesus is saying. I'm the cosmic carbohydrate. That's what Jesus is saying. I'm the cosmic carbohydrate. If you want meaning in this world, if you want a meaning in this existence, it's only found in the person of Jesus. If I want purpose and meaning and hope and life, I can look all over the world for it and end up empty. But if I look at, to Jesus for it, immediately I'll be full. Why? Because He's the bread of life. He says so Himself. And the people that follow Him will never be hungry again. Now listen, Jesus isn't talking about physical hunger at this point. He's not saying if you come to me, you'll never have the urge to make a run for the border. That's not what he's saying at all, right? He's not saying if you come to me, you'll never want to physically eat again. He's saying if you come to me, I will fulfill those things in your life that you don't even realize that you hunger for. 
that I will fill your life in such a way that, that, that those desires and those wants and those longings can finally be full. He's talking about our longing, the longing deep within us for life, for purpose, for meaning. And he says we find those things only in Him because He is the bread of life. <coughs> Excuse me. And for so many of us, the reason that we don't look to Jesus to fill that longing the reason that we don't look to Jesus to fill that hunger in our lives, it's not that we actually might, it's not that we don't have a suspicion that Jesus might could fill that longing in our life. For a lot of us, we have the suspicion that Jesus could fill that longing. That if we really push in and pursue Him, if we really every day would dive into a vibrant daily relationship with Him, if we would live His way instead of our own way, we think there might be something to it. Life might be found there. I think that would be satisfying. But we keep ourselves for a great distance from Jesus because we look at our lives and we go, but because of all the things I've done in the past, I could never get that close to Jesus. Because of all the mistakes I've made, I could never draw that close to Jesus. Because of all the mess in my life, I could never come close enough to Jesus to test and see if He's the real thing. To get close enough to Jesus to taste and, and see if the Lord is good like the Bible says. I can never get close enough to Jesus to really see if true satisfaction, true life, true hope, true healing, true meaning is found in Him because I have to keep myself at a great distance from Jesus because if He is the living God, He's surely out to get me. If He is the living God, he probably doesn't want anything to do with me. If He is the living God, I need to keep my distance because of all the mistakes I've made in my life and all the times that I pursued my own way instead of His way. And, and so I better keep my distance. But that's not the case at all. You see, in verse 35, Jesus says, I'm the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry again. And then He says this just two verses later in verse 37. John 6, 37, He says, Those the Father has given me, will come to me, and I will never reject them. And I will never reject them. Did, did you catch that? Jesus says if we come to Him, He will never reject us. You know, notice, notice what He didn't say. He didn't say, I'm the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry again. So whoever comes to me, if they clean their life up, and they take care of all their past mistakes, and they try to fix all the things they've done wrong, and they come to me, I will never reject them. That's not what Jesus said. He didn't say if they will come to me and try to do more good than they do bad, if they'll try to get their life together and, and just really you know, work really hard to follow me, if they come to me that way, then I won't reject them. He didn't say if they come to me and, and they try to clean up their mess and they realize they're, all the things they've done wrong and they try to go and fix everything they've done wrong and, and really try to be, be a good person and then they come to me, I will never reject them. No, he said whoever comes to me in the state in which they are, I will not reject them. He said if any hungry person comes and says, Jesus I think you're, you're the food that will satisfy my soul. That regardless of the baggage that that person is carrying into the restaurant of a relationship with Jesus, Jesus will say, you can find fullness here. That He will not reject us. And so many times we have a suspicion that Jesus could give us purpose. We have a suspicion that Jesus could give us meaning. We think that, that maybe, maybe we could find life in Jesus, but we keep our distance because we think He'll reject us. And He says, listen, I'm the bread of life, and if you're hungry and you want to be full, come to Me and I won't turn you down. Come to me, and I won't turn you down. Come to me, and I won't reject you. Why does he say that? Because of what Jesus already knew. Fully human, but yet fully divine. He knew the purpose for his life. He knew that as God in the flesh, he would eventually have to give his life on the cross to pay the penalty for the sins of humanity. He knew what was coming. In Romans 5, 8, the Bible says, but God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So he says, listen, I'm the bread of life and I'm going to pay the tab for your meal. I'm the bread of life and I'm going to lay down my life so that you can be full. I'm the bread of life and I'm going to give myself up so that you can find purpose and meaning and life and joy and satisfaction. And so that means the life that's found in Jesus, the bread of life, isn't available to us based on what we do or don't do. It isn't based on, uh, available to us based on how good we've been or how good we haven't been. 
that the bread of life is available to us. The person of Jesus is available to us in relationship based on the goodness that's found in our God. And he says, if you're hungry, I can fill your life with meaning. If you're hungry, you can find life here. If you're hungry, you can find purpose here. If you're hungry, you can find hope here. I'm the bread of life. The people who come and follow me, Jesus said, will never be hungry again. He's the bread of life who offers real, sustainable, authentic life. So Jesus, the bread of life, looks into our hungry, unsatisfied hearts and He says this, Do you want to be full? Do you want to be full? I'm the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry again. I'm going to share with you a story and then we're going to be done. Hayden, my 13-year-old son, he's a junior higher at Henderson. And um, 2021, Christmas of 2021, so a little over a year ago, he got given a gift card to Texas Day Brazil as a Christmas gift. In fact, that was the one thing he asked for. Uh, he was a, like fifth, fifth grader at the time, I guess, sixth grader. And he was like, Dad, the only thing I want for Christmas is a gift card to Texas Day Brazil. And so that's what he got. Well, then being the great parents that we are, we didn't take him for over a year. We just never, like, I never had time to go. We just never could make it happen. A couple times plans fell through. And so <laughs> in the last few weeks, he's been really like, Dad, this gift card's going to expire. You know, let's go to Texas Day Brazil. And so uh, Tuesday, a little over a week ago, uh, almost two weeks ago now, Johanna and Hadley had something to do. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to take him to Texas Day Brazil on a random Tuesday night. He's not expecting it. And so I texted him. And they're not supposed to have their phone at school in the junior high, but you know how that is. Teenagers don't listen to authority. So he had his phone uh, with him and, you know, whatever. So I texted him because I knew he had his phone with him. And uh, I said, hey, man, uh, you want to go to Texas Day Brazil? I'll pick you up right after school. And so he, he told me that he, like, read the text, and then he was like, i got to text my dad back before he makes plans, uh, other plans. And so he just told Coach Johnson in the class, like, Coach Johnson, my dad's texting me. It's really important. I need to text him back. And Coach Johnson's like, what's your dad texting you about? And he told him, he's like, text him back, text him back. Tell him you want to go, right? Coach was on board. And so he texted me back. He's like, yeah, that would be awesome. So I picked him up at school, and, uh, and we just started rolling to Texas Day Brazil, and, and we're on the interstate uh, on I-20 headed to Fort Worth, and I noticed he keeps reaching in. He had sweatpants on, and, and he keeps reaching into his pocket and, like, pulling out something and putting it in his mouth. You know, reach in, pull out, put something in his mouth, and I'm like, dude, what are you eating? And he's like, oh, it's sour Skittles, Dad. And sour Skittles are my favorite candy. I like all of our kids, we, we, we got our stuff for Vietnam, and our snacks are all just bags of sour Skittles, you know. And it's our family's favorite. And he knew, he said he had them in his pocket because he didn't want to have them out in his hand because he knew I would want some of them if he had them out in his hand. And so he's eating these Skittles, and they're just in his sweatpants pocket because seventh grade, right? I mean, like that, seventh grade. Not in a bag in his pocket. It's just some random sour Skittles that this kid gave to him at school, and he thought, I'll just put these in my pocket for later. And he had, he was just eating them out of his sweatpants pocket, and he was like, Dad, do you want some? I'm like, your friend just gave them to you. He's like, yeah, he just handed them to me and put them in my pocket. I was like, yeah, sure, why not? And so now I'm eating these random Skittles out of his sweatpants pocket, and I had a couple, and then I was done, and he keeps eating them, and I look at him, and I was like, hey, buddy, don't fill up on junk. We're going to go eat the good stuff. And he was like, oh, Dad, I know. I'm not going to get full on these. I know what's coming. Don't fill up on junk. We're going to go get the good stuff. Oh, Dad, I won't fill up on this. I know what's coming. You see, the great tragedy for our lives, my life and your life, is that we would go through all of life chasing after things that we think would give us life and meaning and purpose who were never created to give us life and meaning and purpose. We go through life eating sour Skittles when ribeye steak was awaiting us. We go through life eating junk when the good stuff was accessible to us. And Jesus says, I am the good stuff. If you want life, it's found in me. Jesus says, I'm the good stuff. If you want purpose, It's found in me. I'm the good stuff. If you want meaning, it's found in me. I'm the good stuff. If if you want hope, it's found in me. And then he says this, if you'll come to me, I will never reject you. 
Hey, if you'll come and follow me, I'm not going to turn you away. You can come feast at the table of the kingdom of God and find that there is life and find that there is hope and find that there is purpose and find that there is meaning, not just for those who think they have it all together, but those of us who know it's all falling apart. And we can come to the table of the kingdom of God and we can eat of the bread of life. And we can find that true life and true purpose and true meaning is found in the person of Jesus. So I just want to leave you with these questions today. How long will you try to fill your life with the things of the world that will leave you hungry? Do you really want to be full? Because fulfillment is only found in the person of Jesus. Let's pray. As we bow our heads and pray together, maybe you're here today and there's never been a time in your life where you've said yes to the life that's found in Jesus. There's never been a time in your life where you've said yes to to Jesus to find life and purpose and meaning in Him. But you're ready to take that step today. You're ready to step into a personal relationship with Jesus, to be forgiven of your sins and to make Him the leader of your life, to find life in Him. If that's you, I'm going to lead you through a prayer. There's nothing magical or special about the words we use. What matters is the commitment of your heart and mind to the person of Jesus. So right where you're seated in the quietness and stillness of your heart and mind, you could pray something like this. Dear Jesus, today I ask you to give me life. Today I place my life in your hands. I ask you to forgive me of my sins and to give me freedom from my past. Take my brokenness, Jesus, and make me whole. I place my faith in you today. I place my trust in you today. I ask you to be my leader and my Lord and to help me live your way and not my own. Amen.